Hello, lovely people of the world, what's the gear to you? And welcome to the final bonus episode of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. In the previous episode, we got to take our vacation at Dragon Shores. And in today's video, we'll be demonstrating absolutely everything else there is to do, see and do in the world of Ripto's Rage. Starting with the skill points. So, this part of the video is going to be like a big montage of all of them. If you're looking for a specific one, there will be timestamps in the description below for you to check out if you'd like. Beyond that, we'll be going over cheat codes later in the episode, as well as the promised uh, PlayStation credits that I talked about earlier in the Let's Play. So without further ado, let's go! And the first one is going to be located at Idle Springs, and all you need to do is land on top of this idol. Yeah, you're going to be noticing that a lot of these are going to be very simplistic skill points. They're not really too complicated to figure out. And I probably could have demonstrated these during the main part of the Let's Play. But honestly, I just kind of wanted to wait until later so that we could just have a montage like this. Because the thing with the skill points is that it kind of... It's a little distracting in my personal opinion. Um, and... That might not be the best uh, way to word that, but uh, when you already have so many objectives in a level, it's kind of distracting remembering that you have a skill point to also look for when you're going for 100% completion. And plus, most of these skill points are better to get after you've already beaten Dragon Shores anyway, so that's just my personal opinion. This next one is going to be located in Colossus, and you may have seen it already on screen if you've been looking at that. So. The one in Colossus is a bit weird. So the one in Colossus is going to be the first instance of a perfect uh, reward skill point. Now that's not like an official name or anything like that, that's just the way that I'm wording myself. Basically, you have to get a perfect score in hockey, and that's pretty cool. I like this one. Playing hockey in Ripto's Rage is pretty fun. You may also notice that there's no background noise either. So the reason for that is because I was originally going to be fast forwarding through most of these when I was originally going to include this as part of the previous bonus episode. And when I was speeding up the footage I remembered the game audio was going to play music. And it would be kind of a pain to get all that sound back so because I'd have to re-record because I'd have to re-edit the entire montage if I did that so we're instead going to be listening to some background music from the Spyro series and that's going to be fun. Now this next one is going to be looking for all the windmills across the world of Horikos. Uh So this one's pretty interesting as well. Now the thing about the skill points is that for ones like this, these ones are definitely a lot better to get when you're going through the level the first time. Um, because going back for this one means you're basically going to have to reopen all the gates all over again. Uh, just to be able to get access to all the windmills and things like that. And since you're replaying through this the first through the entire level again, you might as well get the skill point the first time. But... That's not the way that I did it when I was recording this last play. And thanks to the super amazing powers of editing, we are speeding up the footage of actually finding all the windmills and then slowing down the footage to normal when we actually collect it. Because fading in and out the footage when it's speeding up, it kind of makes it hard to actually see that we got the skill point, so hooray for more work for me. Now this next one is a bit weird. So the Aquaria Towers is probably the skill point that I struggled with the most when I was trying to record this footage because two walkthroughs that I looked up for this game said that there were only 10 of them. Now, I don't know if this is the case in the PlayStation version, because I never actually got all the skill points on that one. Um, but, I don't know if there's only 10 in the PlayStation, there's 12 in this version, but in the Reignited Trilogy, there are 12 things of seaweed. And you have to burn them all to a crisp to get your sweet, sweet little wood. <laughs> so, that's something that kind of drove me crazy, because I spent like an hour or so trying to get the footage for this, and... I kept saying to myself, okay, I know for sure that was 10 things of seaweed, why am I not getting this stupid skill point? <laughs> but, yeah, it's it was the fact that there was actually 12 of them, not 10, so there were two that I was completely missing. Alright, King Flippy, that's pretty fascinating. Now leave me alone, I already did your side quest in the previous episode. <laughs> 
I still love the detail that Spyro's tail twirls around like a uh, ship a turbine thing. Is that what it's called? The little fan that makes the ship go? I don't know the answer to that. But anyway, now we're moving on towards the Ocean Speedway. Now these may seem like torture to get the skill point because you have to get under a certain time limit when you're already under a pretty strict time limit for these anyway. And you'll be right, these are also pretty difficult to get. <laughs> But with enough uh, trial and error and perseverance and screaming at the TV, then you should be okay. Actually, don't scream at the TV because that's not good manners. <laughs> so, yeah, the Ocean Speedway, we have to get this in a minute and ten seconds. And thank goodness the skill point is not related to Hunter. That is something that I am pretty grateful for. And that, well, that was a pretty cool jump. <laughs> It's been a little while since I've actually seen this footage when I'm recording the commentary for this. Like, okay, so the bonus episodes, like I said earlier, there. this was originally going to be part of the previous episode. I was originally going to have one big bonus video, but then I decided it would be better to split them into multiple videos. So, uh, so that we could have Dragon Shores dedicated to its own video, and then we'd have everything else in a separate one. So... The thing about that is that I told myself that there wouldn't be too much time pass between the videos, and it's been a couple of weeks since that first bonus video came out, um, but hopefully that's not too problematic, but hopefully things are working out. The thing is, I've been trying to get better about actually making bonus videos uh, for overdue Let's Plays and things like that. There's only a few small handful of them now. Um, I believe there's the Fishing Hole in Majora's Mask 3D. Um, I think there are some of the additional minigame exclusive attractions in Nintendo Land I never covered. Just small things like that here and there. Um, most of those bonus videos, I haven't gotten around to doing them because they're either for games that I played recently and I kind of want to break for them, or they're kind of delayed for reasons outside of my control. Um, but the thing with this one was that this is one that I knew I had no excuse not to do. Um, it's just that I also kind of didn't want to play Ripto's Rage again after spending a few months recording the Let's Play. Not that I don't like the game or anything like that. It's just that when you finish a break, when you finish a game, it's nice to have a break for a minute um, for a little while. So that's my professional excuse for delaying this long overdue bonus video that uh, is honestly like the most delayed thing in the history of anything ever. Like nothing else ever took this long to do. <laughs> That's called sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, the Skelos Badlands, uh, there were two of them there. There was destroying all those um, weird cat things, and there's also hunting down all the cacti and things like that. And the Wind Scorch is thankfully pretty simplistic. All we have to do is just attack all the trees, knock down a coconut and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, thankfully, the game actually tells you what these skill points are, I believe. So, yeah. Most of these would be ones would be really obnoxious to figure out if uh, there wasn't an indication in game to tell you that there was a skill point in this level. Although I think they it goes a little bit too far because it does like outright tell you what the skill point does, like how what you're supposed to do to get it. So I think I would have kind of preferred if they only told you the world and then told you the objective after you already did it. Something like Captain Toad tries a tracker. Um, but this uh, skill point right here is my personal favorite, uh, the one in Fracture Hills, because first of all, we get to come back to this awesome level. I love this one so much. But we also get to use the supercharged things. We get to go super fast. Yay! We can run faster than Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> so we gotta do three laps around this area, and that's gonna be fine and dandy indeed. Whenever I go through an area like this where I have to go super fast, I remember back in my older days of making videos um, when I had a laggy capture card thinking that I'd never be able to play a Sonic game or something like that because of how bad the lag was. Um, but thankfully, my capture card and recording techniques have improved since then. And I hope they did because if that was, if that was still a problem nowadays, then I might not even have a channel today. <laughs> So then anyway, the next one's going on through the icy speedway, which I stand by what I said earlier in the let's play that I, I think this might be my favorite speedway in the Spyro series, um, because this one is just so much fun. <laughs> and those little dragon thingies, they look like that Lego dragon thingy that used to be in Downtown Disney at 
uh, Disney World um, before it changed to like Disney Springs or whatever it's called nowadays. I haven't been to the Disney Springs <laughs> since it opened. Like the last time that I was at Downtown Disney was when they still had Disney Quest. <laughs> That's how long it's been. <laughs> Uh, every now and then I think about the fact that uh, Disney Quest was still selling VHS tapes in 2013. <laughs> I love Disney Quest, but they they like never updated it. <laughs> they changed a few rides here and there, and I think they introduced their Wreck-It Ralph arcade machine in there at one point, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, it was definitely something that was kind of like trapped in the time frame that it was built. Uh, so, I hope Disney does revisit that idea at some point, because it was a really cool idea. But I mean, enough about Disney Parks, because we're talking about Spire the Dragon. <laughs> we'll save that topic for when we let's play a Disney game. <laughs> so, the Metro Speedway, I almost called it Metroid Speedway. Huh, that'd be a cool name for a Metroid Racing spinoff. Anyway, <laughs> Metro Speedway. So... <laughs> I this one, just like the other one, we have to beat it in under a minute and 15 seconds. This is probably like the second most difficult speedway um, because they don't really give you a clear path on which objective to go after first. Uh, most It's pretty clear with most of the other ones, but with this one you kind of have to figure out your own path. And the one that I'm taking probably isn't the most uh, convenient way to go through. This is just the way that I happen to do it after playing through this level for like 10 minutes or so. It's not that bad of it. And, of a speedway it's just that it's one of those things where because these are so short it feels like it takes longer whenever you're going through a repeat playthrough if that makes any sense which it probably doesn't because i am terrible at explaining things and we get another skill point yay and next up is Gulp's Overlook, and there are two of them here, and this right here has got to be like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> because I struggle with this boss fight during normal gameplay, but now that we have the Super Flame, we can just completely obliterate him in like 30 seconds. It's so glorious. <laughs> and the other one is that we have to go to the top of the area, because we can actually attack Ripto. So that's a pretty cool detail that I didn't really know about until I was doing research on these skill points. Um, so this is a big reason why I suggested waiting until after you got the supercharge from the Dragon Shores before you go look for the skill points, um, because doing it this way makes it a lot easier to uh, be able to take down those bosses and get the perfect scores and things like that and also greatly helps when you're going through the speedways so that's a big reason why i was recommending that you wait on skill points until after you get the super flame and it's also nice to just replay through the game again because spyro 2 Ripto's rage is definitely a really fun game and it's nice to have a little bit of replay value uh, when looking for these skill points now if there's one thing that i'd complain about with skill points aside from the thing I mentioned earlier about how it's kind of lame that they already tell you what the objective is. The other big complaint that I have with skill points is that I wish there were more of them, honestly. I wish that they had one for every level in the game. Um, so, I'm sure in that time frame, when that actually did happen, I'd be complaining that there are too many of them. <laughs> but, I kind of wish that there were more of them in this game. But the cool thing is, in the Reignana Trilogy, they actually introduced skill points into the first Spyro game. Um, because there were no skill points whatsoever in the PlayStation version of this game. They only introduced them in Ripto's Rage, but for the Reignited Trilogy, they introduced new skill points into the first Power of the Dragon game, which I think is really, really cool. They really went above and beyond with the Reignited Trilogy. I just absolutely love this game. <laughs> now, I know I said earlier that um, if... In hindsight, I probably would have let's play the PlayStation version over the Reignited Trilogy. But honestly, I think that's probably just like nostalgia goggles talking, honestly. Um, because I'm a 90s kid, and I prefer PlayStation graphics. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know this game looks much better and probably is better than the PlayStation version. But I have nostalgia goggles, I like PlayStation graphics, I probably would have chosen that version of the Reignited Trilogy, but... This version is definitely a lot better looking in terms of recording stuff for YouTube and things like that. And I gotta say, the skill point, this is the last build, uh, skill point we'll be getting in this video, but this one is probably like the most nerve-wracking one that I went with because 
Yeah, you can do the supercharger spamming attack at the very beginning of the level to take care of the first two phases, but you still have to repay that during this fight. Um, because even though you do have the super flame and it makes this a little bit easier, you still have to worry about those uh, stupid green energy ball things that, that Ripto's firing at you. So definitely pay attention to your surroundings. Just because they're super duper powerful does not mean you're invincible. And it looks like we'll be taking care of Ripto pretty soon. So without further ado, let's collect our final skill point. That was every skill point in Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. And the next topic we'll be going over are cheat codes. Now this isn't normally something that I'd go over in a Let's Play, but the cheat codes in Spyro 2 are actually pretty interesting. So, most of them are going to be related to uh, changing Spyro's coloring. Uh, you can have one for red, there's black, there's pink, there's green, there's yellow, and there's blue. My personal favorite ones are the black and the pink ones. I think those ones look really nice. Uh, the blue one looks really good too. The green one is interesting because Spyro was originally going to be green. Um, but when they were developing the PlayStation games, um, they realized that if they made Spyro green, he would kind of blend into the background just a little bit too much because there was a lot of grass worlds in the first game. So they changed him to purple so that he'd stand out a bit better against the environments in the game. So, the next cheat codes, they're going to be ones for all the abilities, which give you things like the ground pound and stuff like that from the very beginning or whenever you use this ability. There's a big head mode. I don't know what games, I don't know why games were obsessed with this cheat code of all things, because it's kind of lame, honestly. I've never liked this cheat code. Uh, there is, uh, there's a code, there's of course an option to undo the color change as well, so that's pretty neat. There's one that makes Spyro flat, and that's just so cool. It's like what would happen if you were playing a 3D game as Mr. Game & Watch. <laughs> I really like this one, it's just so fun. <laughs> And the final cheat code is, of course, viewing the credits. Now, fun story. I had a completed save file for Spyro 2 on PlayStation before the Let's Play started. I had it completed. It wasn't 100% or anything like that, but I told myself that I would go and get the last couple gems and skill points on that version um, as we were Let's Playing through the Nintendo Switch version. But... The thing is, I'm a big dumb dummy head, and I over and I saved over that file when I was playing through another game and I was rearranging PlayStation memory cards. <laughs> uh, that hurts so bad that that happened, but that's just being a '90s kid playing with PlayStation memory cards and things like that. Some other fun miscellaneous cheat codes include this one that gives you all these special abilities whenever you want, such as the ground pound or things like that. It also gives you the super flame as well. But my personal favorite one has to be this one that makes Spyro look like his uh, PS1 version. As somebody who loves PlayStation graphics, this one just makes me so happy. <laughs> Although it does kind of suffer the same problem that a lot of cheat codes like this have where, yeah, it does look pretty cool, but it just kind of feels weird having a low polygon model of a character animate so smoothly. <laughs> so that's one minor complaint I have, but it's not really that big of a deal. And as the PlayStation credits roll, I would just like to say one more time, thank you so much for watching this Us Play Us Power 2 Ripto's Rage. Now, I already said my general thoughts on the project during the finale of the Let's Play, but I will reiterate a couple of the points that I made. I think this is a really fun game, even if I prefer the first Spare of the Dragon game. Uh, Ripto's Rage is still a really fun uh, 3D platformer, is one of my favorites of the genre. So this is one that I definitely recommend to anybody who's interested in the Spyro series. Maybe play the first one first, but you'll definitely like Ripto's Rage if you like games like Super Mario 64 or At Time or things like that. 
And I really, really hope that now that Crash 4, it's about time is a thing. I really hope they make a Spyro 4 in this style because that would just be so much fun. <laughs> so I don't know when the next uh, Spyro Let's Play will be exactly, but I will say that if everything goes smoothly, then the gap between this Spyro Let's Play and the next one will not be nearly as long as the gap between the first and the second game. There will be another Spyro Let's Play on the channel within the next couple of years. I have an idea for which one I want to do next. I'm not quite sure though because my idea changes like every other week. But with all that said, that is everything in Spyro Group Does Rage. So. Thank you all so much for watching this Let's Play, and until next time, Lady Gear to you. So I've done two Let's Plays of Spyro games, and I have yet to actually tell the story of how I got introduced to the series. My first exposure to Spyro the Dragon was a McDonald's uh, Happy Meal.